When it's gardening season, many people choose plants that help our much needed pollinators. American Transmission Company does this throughout the state near their transmission lines to support these beneficial insects. But what do you do if you find holes in the leaves or maybe even some speckling and you're worried about the health of your plants. Well, you ask our garden expert, Melinda Myers, and she has some great ideas before you reach for those chemicals. Good morning to you, Melinda. Good morning, Tiffany, and welcome to my home and one of my garden beds. I love it. So tell us a little bit about this. We want to bring these pollinators in because they're so good for everything, but people get a little worried when they see that speckling or the holes. You bet, and there are lots of good guys. You may notice some of the dragonflies flitting around in front of the camera and around the garden. They eat a lot of the bad guys. So bringing in beneficial insects, you'll see bees on my Caradonna salvia, which is a great pollinator plant. You may see some songbirds visiting my garden. They're looking to eat some of those aphids and spider mites that chow down on the plants. So they help manage my insects for me as well. And then if we do need to intercede, there are some things we can do to keep our pollinators Pollinator plant, uh, friendly, pollinators friend, pollinator safe in our pollinator friendly garden. Sorry, been in quarantine too long. And so it's a great way to take care of them. So maybe we can use a strong blast of water. Garden hose dislodges a lot of our aphids and mites and knocks them off. Often that's enough for small populations. Traps. This is soapy water in a yellow dish, and you can see I've captured a few insects already. The insects are attracted to the yellow. They go inside, the soap kills them. There's also been some research that shows reflective mulches work too. So this is a reflective mulch. You could use heavy duty aluminum foil, put it between your rows of plants, and research found that aphids, this reflects the sky. So aphids are, see the sky above. I don't know who figured that out. The sky below, they crash and they, dry, they die and it's even more effective than the traps. But you want heavy duty mulch because otherwise you'll get foil balls in the morning. Japanese beetles, one of the things you can do is soapy water in a can or I took a milk jug and just filled it with soapy water so I could hold on to that while I knock those Japanese beetles into my soapy water. Good thing to do in the morning when they congregate. Slugs, um, it's been a little dry, I couldn't find any slugs, but a shallow can buried in the ground filled with stale beer works great could be fresh beer but who wants to waste it <laughs> or go a little decorative this is a mushroom slug trap so you put this in the garden it looks like a piece of garden art fill it with beer the slugs crawl in they can't get out they drown and die there are organic products like the sluggo and others that have iron phosphate it kills the slug but when it slimes away it won't kill the toads and birds that eat the slugs and that's important because they do a great job at managing managing slugs and other insect pests in our garden. You may have problems with cabbage worm on your cabbage, broccoli and Brussels sprouts. They eat holes in the, the leaves and you can soak them off, but you know, sometimes you miss a little and not everybody's happy with that extra protein. So what I like to do is when I plant my cabbage, I cover it with this floating row cover. Let's air light and water through, but it prevents the adult moths from laying their eggs. It eliminates the problem, no chemicals needed. But maybe you didn't do that, or you notice the holes. Bacillus thuringiensis is an organic, it's a soil, ba it's a soil bacteria that they found kills the larva of caterpillars, this strain, sprinkle that on your plants, they'll eat it, they don't disintegrate right away, they just hang and they slowly decompose, but they quit eating. And then things like horticulture oil, like the summit year-round spray oil, kills those mites, aphids, small caterpillars, but if a lady beetle walks over top, it won't harm it. So it's a great safe way for managing pests. Organic, synthetic, natural, always read and follow label directions carefully. I love that because it's good for people, the environment, for our pets, and for the wildlife and the good bugs, all those things. Talk a little bit about the importance of the pollinators, why we need them, and what the American Transmission Company is doing to bring them to us. You bet. As we mentioned, pollinators are great for pollinating our fruits and vegetables. So we have apples, we have eggplant. You know, many plants are pollinated by wind, but many are pollinated by flies, bees, and bumblebees. So it's important to protect them. Plus, they add beauty to our gardens, right? Seeing butterflies come in and even the bees buzzing, it really adds a nice element. So including pollinator-friendly plants in your vegetable garden around the edge is a great way to help your vegetables. The American Transmission Company 
also is doing their part here in Wisconsin. They're planting low-growing, pollinator-friendly plants under their utility corridors, and they have about 10,000 miles. And what they do is they monitor for good habitat, pastures, uh, meadows, places where those pollinators are going to fly and look for homes and food. They plant special mixes under those so that they can be sure that they're attracting and supporting, providing winter homes for them as well. And then they're also collaborating with the Wisconsin Monarch Collaborative to help work with them to help create great habitat for monarch. And they're also in the advisory committee, and I hope I get this right, for the National uh, Candidate Conservation Agreement for Monarchs on Transportation and Energy Lands. And so they're working with developing those policies. And they were the first ones to put in a pollinator power model to show that if we create these habitats along these long corridors, it's great because the pollinators don't have to go from your yard across the community to find more food or shelter. These long corridors allow them to efficiently collect food and, have, and find a great place, whether they're migrating through or they're going to winter there. It's a great way to support our pollinators. And what they're doing helps all of us, not just in that area, but the more we do for pollinators together, the better for all of us. I love it. And I love seeing you in your element in the garden, Melinda. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Absolutely. Here's a guide. You can download the ATC, American Transmission Company's Grow Smart Guide. It's to help you plant pollinating plants and bring them to our gardens. ATC-GrowSmart.com.